Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I got a very special guest on the line with me today. His name is Anthony Lasavera, one of the greatest entrepreneurs really in North America and who knows, maybe the world. Uh, his last big play, Wind Mobile, took on the big telecommunications giants and ended up becoming the fourth largest wireless carrier in Canada, then sold to Shaw Communications for $1.3 billion. And today we're gonna to be talking artificial intelligence. He's the CEO of Global Live Technologies, building out AI and blockchain. Anthony, it's a pleasure to speak with you today. Thanks for coming on Crush the Street. Kenneth, thank you for having me on. Well, I, I'd love AI. We're, we're spending a lot of time here at Crush the Street covering it. Yep. And just as an initial start to this conversation, you know, AI is changing the economy, changing the world. What are your initial thoughts on this? I think it, it's right. It, it, when you say changing, Kenneth, it's, it's truly a transformation that's coming at us uh, where every corner of the economy and every corner of our society, in fact, is going to be significantly transformed by artificial intelligence. And some people see that as potentially a bad thing. Um, I personally see it as a, as a very positive way forward for us to have a whole new set of uh, technologies of, at our disposal to really enhance quality of life and enhance the prosperity uh, of, uh, of everyone. Uh, and so there's all kinds of different facets to this, elements to this that are, uh, that are taking place simultaneously. But what you have really is the coming together of really fast networks with uh, high-speed wireless networks now that are everywhere. You have uh, cloud storage and cloud computing costs coming down dramatically, and so everyone now is able to move business into the cloud. Uh, and you, of course, have the processing power now that's so substantial that you can really put all those things together uh, and build and realize artificial intelligence. What was a dream even 10 years ago, Kenneth, is, uh, is going to be a reality in the next few years. Yeah, we're really outpacing Moore's law here. Uh, right yep. when we thought we couldn't get any smaller with the, the chips and the, and the computers, we have quantum computing. Quantum, right. The next level. We go yep. beyond physics here. So yep. it's a really powerful thing. So it, let's get into it a little more. You know, AI is going to completely disrupt the job market. Now, you said it's not necessarily going to be a, a bad thing. Uh, there's going to be opportunities. So, you know, what are some of the areas that you see AI really thriving in? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, we just take one example in the transportation industry, uh, the, the trucking industry. So there's uh, on the positive, when you think about an AI that can better pack and manage the flow of trucks, better fill them and better manage the routes they're taking so that you really end up with a, a, a lower cost uh, of, of shipping for each individual item. I mean, those types of things are, are AIs that are already in the marketplace. Um, but autonomous vehicles are seen as a very disruptive uh, thing for the trucking industry because, of course, once the vehicle is autonomous, what does the, the trucker do? And on that one, you know, I don't see it as a negative. I see a whole new opportunity for people that are driving trucks. Autonomous trucks are not going to be driven truly autonomously for at least the next 10, 15, 20 years, maybe beyond that. Maybe there will always be a driver watching the vehicle. And so, but in the next five to 10 to 15 years, you can really envision a scenario where the, the driver can participate in the sharing economy, participate in the gig economy while they're on the road. So whether it's participating uh, in, a, in a totally different business as a, as a contact center representative or uh, doing a task rabbit uh, function, being a, being a there's all kinds of different uh, solutions and, and opportunities for that same driver that was previously having to only drive that truck, now suddenly that driver can do a few things at the same time. Uh, and that's what I think people need to start thinking about with AI is that it really sets us up so that people can be more productive. At the end of the day, we all want to do as much as we can uh, in as short a time as possible. And that's what AI, uh, as at least the promise of AI, uh, is to give you those sets of tools that let you do a lot more and, and, and takes a lot of those like mundane routine tasks that you do every single day uh, off your plate, whether that's cleaning your house, uh, doing your laundry, uh, or anything you have to do around the house, or it's bigger, driving your car to work every day, uh, it, you know, all of that time you're going to get back and you're going to do other things, including other uh, potential sharing economy jobs while you're, while you're commuting to your main job. I mean, sure. so 
uh, there's really exciting opportunities and people just aren't aware of it today, Kenneth. So I think that's why it, it sort of seems a bit daunting, but it, it, there's lots of great uh, thing, positive things that are going to happen in this transition that's coming. But this transition is coming. Let's be clear. As, as you cover a lot on Crush the Street, I mean, it's here and it's happening. And the commercialization of these technologies uh, is very exciting. Yeah, you know, uh, what's interesting and something I point out is if you look at the onset of the, the automobile, uh, indirect industries were birthed out of this. You have hotels, yep. which became a, a booming thing because now people were able to travel or you have fast food. Now, something that came online, which was never even really a big deal prior yep. to cars. And then these are all indirect sectors that nobody was even conceiving when yep. building out the automobile industry. And I'm curious, do you anticipate any sectors? And I know there's things that are beyond our comprehension now, but any indirect sectors that you see booming because of AI going forward? I think there's lots of uh, different, uh, that example is a great one. I mean, what other industries are going to be created if we stick with automobiles? What other industries are going to be created around the autonomous vehicle industry? And for one thing, I mean, can you envision a, a, a completely shared vehicle uh, economy where people will now get in a vehicle and have a meeting uh, because they don't need to be, no one needs to be looking at the road. So you can envision cars being transformed into meeting rooms and, and people will move around that way. And the time that's it, traveling from one meeting to another, people can, can, instead of, you know, commuting across Los Angeles from one meeting to another for 45 minutes or an hour, you, you have another productive hour in the day. So uh, that's going to create uh, all kinds of, again, sharing economy type job opportunities that just don't exist today. Uh, in terms of like totally new industries being created uh, by AI, of course, when we think about uh, robotics and we think about what will happen when robots become uh, ubiquitous, you know, when the robots are everywhere uh, and they're doing all sorts of functions, there's gonna be just a huge, uh, in my opinion, like a, a, a new, a, a birth of a new industry that's gonna be around uh, maintaining and managing those robots and, and maintaining them the same way the automobile industry created the car mechanic industry. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, robot mechanics being created out of the robotics industry. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's lots of great direct uh, analogies to the automobile industry when you think about robotics and what the impact of robotics is going to be and the impact of automation. And people say, well, automation and robots mean jobs lost. Well, to your point earlier, when the automobile was created, I don't think anyone anticipated that becoming a, a car mechanic and building a chain of mechanic uh, shops could be actually be a very, it is a very lucrative business for lots of people. Right. No, it's a very powerful thing and I'm very optimistic about it. Uh, we've talked a number, about a number of opportunities and in indirect sectors that have come up at different transitions in our society. I, I do think it's going to be a major disruptor for somebody who may have been a driver for all their years, and that's all they know, and they're not yeah. really anticipating the change here. So I think it's important to kind of be thinking about the changes that are coming. I agree uh, completely. Uh, yeah, uh, this is where governments, you know, governments really need to step in here and really ensure that we've got the tools at people's disposal from an education standpoint and to give people those alternatives, right? Sure, yes. So, uh, Anthony, one of the things that I think is, is very interesting here is we're seeing machines get very smart. They're going from inferring now. They're, they're really thinking. And, and this is the, where we're going with AI. It's not just menial jobs anymore. It's jobs. It's high-level jobs. It's yep. analytics, being able to analyze large amounts of data and provide useful information on that. And so, you know, how, I mean, in the medical field, right? Or yep, absolutely. So different things, you know, going from uh, soldiers in the battlefield to machines deciding whether or not something needs to die or someone needs to die. I mean, these are very powerful things here. Um, you know, any insight on this and just as to where things are going, especially as machines get into very high level, very important jobs? Yeah, that's a great question, Kenneth. And I think it's something that uh, I think we might need a lot more than the time we have today to talk, to talk about. But, you know, high level, my perspective on this is when we think about machines playing in what I'll call, you know, increasingly decision-making roles. So instead of just doing those routine tasks, those mundane tasks that are relatively inconsequential one way or another, what the outcome is, when you start having a machine making real decisions that could impact a lot of people's lives, 
Um, you raised the, the military example, but there's examples that are you know, going to be everywhere in, in civilian life. I mean, in, in the, again, to stick with the autonomous vehicle example for a second, I mean, a vehicle is going to have to make a decision pretty soon uh, you know, what it's going to do when there's a, a, a lose-lose situation, meaning there's going to be an accident. How do you uh, minimize the casualties? And, and, and there's that you know, famous example of, well, w would you hit the kid running across the street or would you pull on the sidewalk and risk hitting five other people? Um, those are the, you know, those are the, the decisions that are in front of us. So, and, and it applies everywhere. So I think that when we think about that, my opinion is we need to get governments engaged much quicker, much more quickly than they are already today, thinking about what is going to be the parameters and framework that AIs are going to operate within. I mean, we hear these um, doomsday stories all the time. Um, there's very prominent uh, entrepreneurs like Elon Musk that have been quite vocal about the risks of AI and what could go wrong with AI and what he sees going wrong with AI. Stephen Hawking is another one. Um, but there's lots of, lots of people that are saying we're, we're really, you know, sort of have a risk of very significant damage to our society. Um, so I think it, the onus is on governments to get engaged quickly and have a conversation about what are going to be the rules of engagement and what are going to be the limits we put on these algorithms. Um, because you're quite right. You talked, you mentioned inferring. I mean, we're in that place now where an AI is able to reason. It's able to make its own decisions. It's able to figure out what information it needs to make its own decisions, starting to think much and much more like a human. Mm -hmm. And so that introduces a whole new set of opportunities, but also a whole new set of risks. And without any kind of framework around this, I think we're just, we're asking for problems. What we really should do is get in front of it and have a regulatory framework that governs how AIs will be deployed. So I absolutely think AI is the future. Technology is demanding it. I, I think governments are, are going to demand it too. Uh, yep. One of the things, you know, you know, we don't necessarily have to get into this, but one of the things that we have issues with is these baby boomer dem demographics. And yep. we don't have a generation to follow to really fill that gap, especially in countries like China and Japan, where, where the one child policy or in Japan, where you know, a lot of, apparently they're not having sex as much. And there's yep replacement of that generation. Yeah. I really think AI is going to step into these roles and fill a lot of these jobs. Uh, but, you know, having said that, you know, I believe it's the future. And one of the ways to hedge yourself and to not be uh, sidestepped by AI is to be financially correlated to the boom coming. And, you know, obviously you're running Global Live. You're in front of this trend. I'd love to get some information from you. Tell us about Global Live and, you know, what you guys are working on. Yeah, we're excited about what we're doing at Global Live. We're, we're building a, a next generation software company. And I say next generation because it's really using the latest in artificial intelligence and blockchain technologies together uh, to really accelerate the deployment of these solutions into the marketplace. And that's our goal is we're trying to be first to market whether it's in financial services, it's in healthcare, it's in manufacturing, it's in smart cities. We're trying to be first to market with a combination of AI and blockchain in a way that not only identifies cost savings and figures out ways to be, make existing business models more efficient, but we're also really focused on opening up whole new revenue opportunities for our, our joint venture partners. And I say joint venture partners because that really is our go-to-market strategy. So in each one of these verticals that we're focused on, in financial services, healthcare, manufacturing, smart cities, uh, we're, we've curated and carefully selected joint venture partners that are already leaders in their respective industries, that already have a very significant customer base, uh, and they're just on the cusp of wanting to deploy AI and blockchain technology, and that's where we come in. We partner with them on a true joint venture basis, and we're going to build and deploy this technology into their existing business. Uh, and they're totally economically aligned with us to make that a reality. I mean, we're not just coming in trying to make a software sale uh, that has been historically the tradition, which I've done for the last 20 years, try to figure out how to get people using my business's software. This time, my go-to-market strategy with Globalive is very much via these joint ventures where we already have an established business with established customer base with a good reputation in their and leadership reputation in their own market. And, and we're deploying our, our software as quickly as possible. That's awesome. So Anthony, one of the things you mentioned was communicating with governments and just kind of informing the population. And, and now here yep. we are doing that right now. Uh, you know, what else are you guys doing to, to really prepare? And I know you guys are 
on the forefront of this. You guys are in front of this wave. So what do you, what else are you guys doing to really educate people and get the yeah. out on, on these massive changes that are coming going forward here? Yeah, I think it really, uh, it really ties into what we've already talked about in this game, what you just mentioned in terms of education. It ties into training and it ties into, let's look at, you know, and one of our joint venture partners, uh, you know, is a manufacturing uh, uh, joint venture where there's, you know, an existing, uh, existing manufacturing line. There's very important roles for both humans and robots on that manufacturing line already. And there's all kinds of opportunities to use AI and blockchain to improve that manufacturing operation. Improve it from a safety perspective for the people that are working there improve it from an efficiency perspective for the robots that are doing their functions. And that's what you really see, Kenneth. And if people think, well, a robot replaces a human, that's not the way this is going. What it is is really is humans and machines working together. And where our software comes in is really optimizing and, and improving the way humans and machines work together. So in that manufacturing example, we have an AI watching what's going on on that line, and we're going to and we are uh, in the process of rolling out a, a recommendation engine to say, like, well, this is some changes that you can make, humans and, and robots, and humans changing the robots, and, and vice versa. The robot can say, this, these are addition fun additional functions that it can take over that a human no longer has to do, and you, and you improve the output of the manufacturing facility, which increases its revenue, increases its profits, and uh, ironically, for all those that think it's going to reduce jobs, suddenly now your business is expanding and you're adding jobs. Uh, so... I think that that's where people kind of lose sight of this is that this is not an all or nothing where suddenly, you know, manufacturing is going to be automated and we move to lights out, so-called lights out manufacturing and there's no need for people on the line. That's just not, you know, that's just not the way this is, is going or is going to go uh, in the coming, uh, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. That's just not the way it's going to unfold in my view. We're going to have this confluence, this, this merging of, of, of machines and, uh, you know, and humans working together. And uh, as long as we have the right governing rules around how machines are built and deployed, then I think that, you know, they can be seen as a tool and they will be used as a tool. And that's just going to make people more productive. And now suddenly uh, every human can do much, much more uh, during the day, which means they've got, you know, either less time that they need to work so they can spend more time with their families and they get the same output or they can produce more and make more uh, income as well. So I, I think that's the way people need to start thinking about it, and, and it comes down to awareness and education, to your point. We really got to get to a place where there's uh, awareness, and then, then there's training around these things so that people can say, hey, yeah, I see that now. I see the way this manufacturing solution from Globalive is improving the line, improving the output of the, of the manufacturing line, which means we're selling more units, which means we've got more profits, and suddenly now we're in a hiring, you know, hiring and growing our business. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I point out to people all the time and it is Airbnb. You look at how many hundreds of thousands of leases they're doing on an everyday basis and how many yep. new entrepreneurs are making money because of this platform where you have AI coordinating people and, and doing business together. And all of a sudden now you have travel, which has become a lot cheaper because of this platform and AI obviously being the core of what's facilitating all of these negotiations and absolutely actions. So it's, it's really positive. I I'm hundred percent with you there. Uh, but with that, Anthony, I'd love to give you some opportunity here to close out and give us some closing thoughts. Uh, what, what people should be thinking about and how to proceed forward thinking about artificial intelligence. Yeah, look, I think when, when you look at investing in artificial intelligence and blockchain, I think it's very important to be looking long term. So uh, I'm an investor myself, as well as a, a founder CEO my whole career. Earlier in my career, I was just a founder. I, I started with nothing. I started with a small business loan for $25,000. And now later in my career, 20 years on, I'm, I'm making investments as well. Um, so my perspective on it is, is that you need to look long. If you're not going to think long term and look long term about this, uh, it's not a really good space for you to invest in because in the short term, there's going to be a lot of volatility, a lot of uh, you know, violent swings in, in value. And we see that, of course, right now with cryptocurrencies where we've gone from you know, extreme highs to now we're, we're in back into lows and people are very bearish on crypto now. Uh, they were very bullish you know, six months ago. So there's really going to be those types of rapid fluctuations and, and in value and sentiment. And so you got to think about as an investor, uh, looking long. And that means looking at the big companies like IBM that are thought leaders in machine learning and blockchain. Uh, and, and if you want more risk exposure, companies like mine, 
Global Life Technology, where we've got a bit long you know, track record of commercializing software, but we're not IBM either. So uh, there's, there's more risk, but then therefore hopefully more growth. Uh, and so, but if you start thinking about just speculating on coins, or you start thinking about betting on uh, really early stage startups, I, I think that's very risky in this space because these are new technologies and it's going to take time for them to be adopted. And, and a lot of venture capital is pouring into AI. Uh, and a lot of that, you know, a lot, a lot of that, uh, the solutions that are going to come out of that tech that's being developed are just not going to get anywhere. Uh, and so um, I, I say you got you to think about uh, quality management teams. You got to think about teams that have been around that have seen it. Um, uh, Global Live, my team is one of them, but uh, we've got over 100 years uh, of experience in starting and building and operating businesses and technology um, uh, on a combined basis on my team. But, you know, there's lots of, not, maybe not lots, but there are, you know, teams like us out there. And I would say if you want to get sort of more risk exposure, that's where you should focus because nobody's got all the answers here, Kenneth. No, no, one, no one's even got the majority of the answers here. This is such early days for AI uh, and blockchain that um, I think that experience is going to go a long way. Um, and, and, and if you're a more cautious conservative investor, then, you know, I would look to the blue chips. I, th I think Microsoft and IBM are, are well positioned right now in AI and blockchain. All right. Anthony Lasavera, uh, CEO of Global Live Technology. Uh, thank you so much for coming on Crush the Street with me today. Kenneth, thank you for having me on.